Hey yo, what's cracking? Welcome to Mafia 3, and in case you don't know, I'm Reckless Smo. Now, this game right here kind of flew under my radar until recently, because I mean, I seen one like one gameplay of it, and I mean, it looked pretty cool, I and mean, then recently, as a, <laughs> I really didn't have any much games to play, and I seen it, and I was like, you know, I might try it, it might sound kind of cool, and like, Lincoln Clay, like, what's up? <laughs> He's a Vietnam veteran, so basically... He's also in the mob, or a mob that adopted him back then. So we're gonna actually, we're gonna start this shit up, cause you know I'm talking to you that much. <clears throat> so this shit look like it might be fucking sick. And look at that detail and just the concept art. So basically, the story of this game is you play a, a Vietnam vet, Lincoln Clay, who comes back um, from the war, and his whole entire. Uh, Mafia has been wiped out by the Italian mob, so he's basically trying to get revenge and shit. So uh, there's like a lot of features in this game from like when I seen like <clears throat> them like showing it off. I'm gonna have to like change these settings a little bit. Yeah, I fuck with that. English, English, subtitles on. Your use of the software is subject. 2014. The fuck? Whatever. All right, we finally got this shit. Hey. Okay, we're gonna do. Yes. I'm gonna try to have a, a low aim assist. I wanna actually have a. Oh, it's like a loading screen. Never mind. That concept art. Humphrey. Is that supposed to be Jack Daniels? Looks like a Jack Daniels bottle. I don't know much about alcohol. I never drank it. An authentic and immersive experience that captures this very turbulent time and including depictions of racism. We find a racist beliefs, language, and behaviors of some characters in the game abhorrent and believe it is vital to include these depictions in order to tell Lincoln Clay's story or whatever. Lincoln's mother abandoned him in 1947, a couple of years after he was born. His mother, I heard she was Dominican. I always figured his father was white, maybe even not Italian. Not that it mattered. Back then, if you look black, you black. Same as today, I suppose. He stayed at the orphanage until 1958. Now, when did you meet Lincoln Clay? 1966. I was running black ops out of Laos on behalf of the CIA. He was loaned out to me via joint CIA DOD task force. He was a quiet boy. Good boy. Two Purple Hearts, a Bronze Star, and the Distinguished Service Cross. He served his country with honor and distinction. After the city closed the orphanage, he fell in with Sammy Robinson. Sammy ran the black mob over in Delray Hollow. I can't say I approve. But often colored boys didn't have a lot of options back then. Boys like Lincoln, the ones who've been abandoned, they're always looking for a home. Always looking for a place to belong. I think he thought he'd find it in the army. Thing is, once that's lost, Never get it back again. When he returned from the war, Lincoln ended back up over at Sammy's. Now Sammy owed the Italian mob a whole lot of money, and he needed Lincoln's help. 
It's a damn shame what happened. It breaks my heart. Okay, February 27th, 1968. Mardi Gras. Oh, we getting into it. Oh my god, this shit looks beautiful. Ah. Oh, oh shit. Oh, he working security. Oh. Lord. Still Where say this is the craziest goddamn thing I ever heard. Using real money to rob the feds. Well, hell, man, not like this is our cash. This all came from Skeletta. Besides, peanuts compared to what we're gonna haul out of there. Is everything we need to burn? Yeah, that's it. I grabbed the keys to the truck, then we can get the fuck out of here. What? Okay. Where the fuck do I? Keys in the other room. Oh, oh I like how he just aims a gun like that. All right, okay. Can I like? How do I run? Okay, let's walk up in there. Oh. Still not sure about leaving him like this. He came through with the truck just like we asked. He agrees his partner to make it look good. If you got doubts? Why take the chance? Uh. What's this dude? Oh, you can pick him up. Nah. Oh shit! I almost shot him. I'm trying to figure out how to reload. Oh, square. Ah, uh, is he dead? How's if I shoot him? No, do it. Just so he knows. Try to shoot him in the foot. We all good. We should get going. You got the keys, so you can drive. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. How do I? Can't squeeze my big ass in there. Uh, okay. Let's walk out of here. Oh, now I can jog. Okay, cool. Let's go! Back it up to the loading dock. Some of these fellas might get a little uh, rough with the language and... Well, I ain't like I've never been called nigga before. <laughs> nah, I know, but I'm just saying, <laughs> right? if I go along with it, ain't nothing poisonous. The only thing I care about is getting our hands on that money. When I say something about being hot, that's when we make our move. All right. All right. Damn, nigga, got a big ass shotgun. All right, I'm gonna just try to walk at his pace. All right, here we go. All right, let's go. Let's get it. Put your IDs up the glass. We're part right. of the Boeing crew. Gotta scratch your head. What the fuck's this shit heel doing here? Affirmative action. You know how it is. Old country is spinning around a goddamn toilet. You can follow me. As for you, go on and grab those bags off the truck. You'll be carrying them to the burning room. How much y'all bring in? $238,546. <clears throat> Small bills, mostly. That's kind of fucked up. Miss Gale call up your office when we're done. She'll confirm the delivery. Yeah, that's gotta be Appreciate fucking heavy. Damn, I'm carrying a whole big ass bag of money. Imagine, you just be like, oh, because 238, was it 38,000? That's like a lot of money in 1968. You need to check that scatter gun. You packing anything? Still in training. Good. One less goddamn thing for me to worry about. Oh, that's you fucked up. up on the way out. All right, excuse me, stupid bitch. Buying rooms down in the cellar. This way. I ain't seen all around these parts before. Y'all's over in Georgia for a while. He just got out what the, the service. Fuck? My cousin's been trying to get on here for over a year now. Was in the no, Navy for two tours. That metal's falling out of his ass. Government tells him thanks, but no thanks. That's a crock of shit if I ever heard one. Sad day when a God-fearing white man can't get a job. That old nigga who staggers in is hiding on the spot. Oh, that's fucked up. You gonna... Call me at. Whoa, what the 
fuck was that? I don't know if the mic picked that up, but I hope it didn't. <laughs> wait. No witnesses. These bastards better weird. not be playing with each other back there. <laughs> fuck you! Right. Yeah. Didn't know y'all held that much gold. That Washington's been shuffling around on account of the war. It's here, then it gets sent to Dallas, then it comes back. Yeah, it doesn't make a lick of goddamn sense. It's a nice ass bank. Yeah, we are. Too bad we about to rob this motherfucker. Alright, what do you want it? Massa. <laughs> those bags on the table there. Alright, cool. Never done this detail before. Figured it'd be bigger. It gets the job done. Only time there's a problem is when Why are you burning the money? Fuck. What? That's some heat right there. We used to use coal for it, but a year or so back we switched over to oil. Maintains a more consistent flame. Here's some guy come around the house trying to switch me over to oil. Told him. Uh, Want to call me that nigga? Asshole. We need to move. Danny and Ellis should be coming up any time now. Uh, give me a second. <clears throat> Let me just. Let me uh grab homeboy. Move his ass. So we're nice and take care of those guards. Right Keep your ass down. You don't want <laughs> them getting drop on us. I know See, what the I, fuck uh, I'm doing. Yeah, he's an army. Deal with the guards. All right. All right, let's go. Keep it on them. <gasps> These are. Uh, you know that house we've been renting now? Called over there last night. Told them I wanted to sell it. Told them I'd be out in two weeks. Oh shit. The man, his name's uh, John, starts laying into me, saying the lease gives them the right to a 30 day notice. That's how he's supposed to find. Nope. Get knocked out. Give me that gun. Switch weapons. Okay. Cool. What's up? Who want it? Only way we walk out of here is if we get the weapons stored in that armory. Bust the door open. I'll watch Bust our asses. Bust the door open. Wait, is this kind of different? Old man gonna shit a brick when he hears about this. Where'd you at? Okay, Fuck. let's go. Fuck. I got you. <gasps> Let me have it. I need to have it. Huh? Pry it open. Oh, I gotta help Give you. me that damn thing. Give me it, bruh. That's how you do his shit. Give me a button. Wait, expose the lock. Rotate until it's in the green zone. Okay, I got it. Step two, pull the lock, press square when the indicator is in the green zone. Uh huh. Uh. Hey, simple. Nice. And uh, hell yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. All right. Uh, what's this? Yeah. Meds. I don't need them. Okay. Hit him with the smoke. Huh? Oh shit. shit man, what's these up? Guys ain't fucking around. Face way worse than this over in Nam. Little smoke don't mean shit. Stay close Little to smoke the don't mean shit. Watch for the drill. I'll deal with these assholes. Yeah. Get Spartan killed. Oh. Well, Sammy had men all over the place. And one of them worked at a cleaner's and stole the uniforms Georgie Marcano and Lincoln Clay wore on the day of the robbery. Another one was a janitor at the Federal Reserve, and he provided a rough layout. The robbery of the Federal Reserve was timed perfectly, and none of it would have been possible without the involvement of Sammy Robinson, Lincoln Clay, and the rest of the black mob. February 20th, 1968, one week before. Hey, you just chilling like You just come shit. from Vietnam? That's right. I was a Marine in the Pacific. You can take it from me. Just because you're home doesn't mean you're back. You understand? People around here, they don't, they don't get it. Never will. 
Keep your ass out of the trouble. <laughs> oh, here's his homie. Bottom of beer, Sorry, too. I'm late. Got caught up crossing up. the bridge. Don't worry about it. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for my stepbrother, Lincoln Clay. You seen him? He used to get ticked off if you were even a minute late. Kiss my ass. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> How was the trip? Being how this is the first time in four years and somebody telling me where to go, what to do, or how to do it, it was fucking great. <laughs> mm. What's new with the old man? Man, don't even get me started on Pops. He used to pull his head out of his ass. Same as ever then. Brother, you have no fucking idea. Damn, Ellis. She's looking good. <laughs> Just like I left her. Man, even I know not to fuck around with your cop. Hmm. All right, come on. I'm ready to go home. Let's go then. Hmm. I'm ready too. You know, I just shot like a couple cops up. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Wait, what the fuck? How do you know I got a gun? Uh, okay. Let's. Oh my god, it's a pretty big map. Alright. I feel like it's gonna get annoying. Let's see what oh! So Sammy's doing alright? Yep. Ever since we got Four your years and I did it this bit. Climbing the walls. <laughs> what if the plane crashes? What if the train's delayed? What if they call him back? And he goes stand in front of the kitchen window and sip his whiskey. I'm in the army. I don't give a fuck. Don't say nothing about me telling you that. I won't. Oh, be fine oh. once he sees you. Oh, hold on, I like, I like how he just Mama Hill, like, you know how slides, he gets. drifting a little bit. Wow, oh, look at this place, though. God damn. The detail, the amount of detail. Oh, shit, that they put in this. I'm gonna go this way. Fuck it. This way. Oh, shit, cops. How did I know that was cops? Police awareness. The police will attack you if you commit crimes, act suspiciously, or break traffic laws within range of their awareness. Police awareness is indicated by the blue police awareness indicator in the center of the screen. Okay. You okay. remember Marty and Ron Langford? Sure. They moved up to Empire Bay Crap, right? so after you Excuse shipped me. out. Started selling Let me crash my car. They bitch. call and ask me if I want some. I say sure. It's free money as far as I'm concerned. Anyhow, a month back, Marty drops me a line and says they're moving into heroin, that they're looking for a partner down around these parts. Can't imagine Sammy was too keen on that. I never told him about the weed. That ain't nothing to nobody. But this, I got to talk to him about. I ain't said more than three words, and he's yelling about the feds. How we don't need J. Edgar up our asses, and what the fuck am I thinking? Selling dope with kids running around the neighborhood. We ain't selling no dope to no children. Nah. <laughs> like they got any money to begin with. Fucking around the side. Heroin was pretty serious shit. Knew a couple guys over in Nam who were running it. Wound up pissing off the wrong person. The fuck Got am I their doing? throats cut. Shit, man, I know what's what. That's why I'm talking to Georgie about it. There's no way Sal's gonna go along with that. Georgie says he can keep his old man from fighting out. We'll still clear the hollow in Frisco, just selling the French wall. Georgie's Uncle Lou won't say shit as long as we give him a taste of the action. I don't know, man. Georgie's a cool cat and all, but heroin ain't the kitty pool. Come in on it with us. I yeah, bet he'd yeah, agree to a three-way split. Uh, I don't know. I kind of need to lay low a bit, figure some things out. Yeah. Skr, skr. All right. Oh, shit. Oh, whoa. Oh, shit. Fuck it, it's your car. Bash it up all you want. I don't care. Once you get settled in, I was thinking we can go to this new club in the French. Damn, you're scratching the paint. Damn, you're scratching the paint. I don't know how to drive, now, okay? Like no, I was saying. Once you get I settled in, I was thinking we can go to this new club in the French Ward. Maybe double date it. Well, who the hell am I gonna go with? Your great aunt Beatrice? Uh, oh, God. <laughs> I, I can't tell you, I accidentally saw sure. her without a shirt once. Oof. That woman has the droopiest, nastiest tits I've ever seen. <laughs> they were like two sacks of potatoes with nothing in them. Yeah, <laughs> that was a fucking accident. Hey man, fuck you. I was damn lucky to walk away from that one. Anyway, you'll go with Regine. Regine? Believe me, once you see her, you're gonna wanna dig right in. Ha, <laughs> matter of fact, 
you got half the guys in the hollow sniffing around asking her out. Turns them all down. She's only got eyes for you, Lincoln Clint. <laughs> Fuck you. Wait and see, man. One hey. look and your pecker's gonna pop right out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's find out. Oh shit. Uh, we're gonna Damn, you scratching right. the paint. I don't care. Let's go see what Lincoln Clay got. Okay, it's got this motherfucker. Alright. Come on, we're going through the front. I ain't having your wall here. I ask you the back though. Yay, yay. Look who I found panhandling out in front of the train station. Pleasure, man. <laughs> Boy, I send you to bring Lincoln Clay home. Not the big nigga who ate him. Well, shit, old man. I finally went somewhere they knew how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home, son. How are you? I'll be better once I get some of that shine in me. I always <laughs> did love corn whiskey. I would like to make a toast. My father used to say that the real worth of a man came from the mark he left on the world. When Lincoln first told me he was joining the military, I was against it. Too dangerous, I say. Let those people fight their own war, I say. But then I realize Lincoln needed to go out and make his mark. And that's precisely what he did. I'm so... so proud of you. Paul Lincoln! Bienvenue à la maison! Paul Lincoln! Bienvenue à la maison! Damn. <laughs> <laughs> nice mouth. It's so good. <laughs> nice seeing you, Lincoln. Oh, I kept you in my prayers. I really appreciate that, Father. <laughs> now, who wants to get shit faced? <laughs> hey! It's hard oh, to explain old. what it's like coming home from war. Elation. Fear. Guilt. Imagine being trapped in a dark room and there's no way out. And every fear, every nightmare you ever had is in that room with you. And there's no escape. From any of it. And then one day a door opens and you're free to go. Just like that. The thing is, you made your peace with your terror and your fear of death. And now part of you is afraid to leave it behind. But what choice do you have? Every soldier has to walk through that door, one way or another. Man, that whiskey's going to in the morning. Hell, man, just sleep it off. The room's the same as you left it. I'm going to take the basement. <laughs> the basement? Why the fuck you want to crash down there? I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Man, that wall must have really fucked you up. And we must be hella drunk. Why would he take the basement? Oh yeah, war hero. I don't know how to run. <sighs> oh, you already know what Lincoln about to do. <laughs> he drunk, just came home from Vietnam. <laughs> he in the basement. <laughs> Have a little alone time. I'm just checking around right now. I can't figure out the run button. I don't care. I'll figure it out later. Alright. Time elapsed. There we go.
Oh, night terrorist. Army does that. Or the military actually, just not just the army, it's like the military in general. <sighs> Damn, he's not even hung over or nothing. We barely have two nickels to rub together. Now we're paying for all that food. Jesus Christ! Watch that mouth of yours. We wouldn't be in this mess if you were to listen to me. What mess? Not something you need to worry about, Lincoln. I got it under control. Under control? God damn it, you need to. Boy, I'm not eyes. warning you again. Have it your way, old man. Let him be. He needs to cool off. You mind telling me what's got him so riled up? We've been having uh, problems with the Haitians. But like I say, I got it under control. Well, truck's all loaded up. I figured we got enough out there for... Should I, should I come back? In honor of your returning to us safe and sound, I made a donation to Father James here. Supplied him with food he can hand out to some of our needier family. Well, I was hoping you'd lend me a hand, Lincoln, and give you a chance to see the neighborhood. This thing with the Haitians, how serious is it? Ah, you know Ellis. Someone looks at him the wrong way, he's on them like a wet dog. Like I said, I can now uh, come back. Nonsense. Lincoln needs to get out. Enjoy the day. Besides, be good for the two of you to spend some time together. Mm. Go on. Those people waiting on their food. Oh, I saw Langan a couple times once he was first back. <laughs> he told me he wanted to leave town, head out to California. Now, he had a friend in the service who could get him a job working at the Mare Island shipyard. And the only reason he came back was to tell Sammy and Ellis goodbye. But then he found out about the trouble Sammy was having with those Haitians. So he decided to stay and help. Those Haitians, they are bad news. No talking Lankin out of it. Whatever else he might have become, Lankin was always loyal. Shit, that's how you gotta be. Loyal to the fam. Six days before Mardi Gras. Well, then most likely. Three month apprenticeship to start, then the union lets you in. You tell Sammy and Ellis? Not yet. Gonna wait a few days. Didn't want to spring it on them since I just got back. Well, they won't like the head, but they'll come around. You need to do what's best for you. Go ahead and start serving those folks. I'll be back. All right. As always, I'm gonna cut the video here. Uh, I'm going on over a little bit of time. I'm gonna try to record more long parts like this, but I'm liking this game. It looks beautiful. I'm interested in the story, the character is pretty interesting, and just the overall feel of it, I'm feeling this game. And, uh, you know, I'm Reckless Mo, and stay tuned for the next